Hey guys, welcome back to another video from the channel about memes, comics, art, and being sad. But most definitely not for kids. I thought I'd do a little tutorial for you guys today and I want to show you how you can make comics and do it quickly. And this is going to be going off from a, a video I've watched from Marsh Makes Comics and that's to do with his level up sketchbook and I really recommend you guys go check that out to get a better idea of what the exercise will be like so that it serves as a good foundation for what I'm going to talk about. I really think this is going to help you comic enthusiasts especially you and not just illustrators or any other fine arts discipline and I think it'll be really helpful even if you don't have a plot or a story in mind at least for the time being now to begin, I want you guys to record a moment or maybe an object in the room just to help you get a focus. You'll be using mainly your sketchbook for this exercise and I want you to feel free to start from anywhere on the page. It doesn't have to be perfect. It is a sketchbook after all. And most importantly, we're here to practice. See, my idea for this challenge came from observing someone I knew a coffee shop the other day and I filled it in like I like drew his features and then I started adding panels around that and I built my own little story around that little moment and uh, I remember doing this in art school I kind of treated it like a diary at the time but doing this makes me consider the moments I want to capture and how I go about doing that. And the interesting thing about this, moving on to the second step, which is, you, if you want, you can daydream or fantasize, change the sequence of events for whatever happened. And you'll definitely see by the end of this page that I indeed included a pineapple man. And <laughs> so I think that's what's gonna make this exercise for you guys really fun. As long as you have done one page, and you're not too fussed about perfection. Like, in my example, I played around with different camera angles, but that's just my personal approach. You may just put in your characters in mid-shot or as stick figures if you like, but you don't have to, like, adhere to reality that you're telling you could daydream and show a different result of what happened if you like. This is all for the pursuit of understanding comics, especially if you would like to learn about layout and how to compose a page in case you don't have a story idea. Now back to this example, the scene I am actually drawing in question happened to me while I was sitting drawing someone else at a cafe and someone like walked in front of me while I was doing that. So this kind of came from what I was observing from around me, just drawing from life, and I made it into six panels for a page, but I ended up making the last few panels a bit bigger, more of a wide shot. Like I said, I was playing around with different camera angles, and the result is not that, not that great, but as you'll see in the next step, it's gonna get real interesting. Because the final step is, and here's the kicker, once your comic is finished, and you can ink it if you want, you don't really have to, but once it is, you get to choose a comic artist's work you particularly enjoy, and try to apply what they're doing on any page to what you're doing. So what I ended up doing is going with, um, Alan Moore's Watchmen, also drawn by Dave Gibbons. And what I found him doing was he set out this nice nine panel grid, which is great for, it's good for pacing out each moment and, and it helped me reevaluate my own page layout and how I could use what notes I had taken and redraw the scene. And what I found out from redrawing and inking this page is that my panels were a lot more focused. They were, folk, they had either one or two subjects at most, and they used a lot of black to frame kind of the, um, or ground the subject as it were, like 
there's a panel where it's just the back of my head is like bringing me into focus and you'll see that the first panel is kind of my take on the the chapter with where Roshak is in the mental asylum and he's looking at all the different Roshak tests provided by the psychiatrist. When I came to adding the background details they were mostly just um, little vague um, outlines or textures but I found that the panels were still grounded by the heavy use of blacks on the page. Also don't try to draw a pizza in black and white. It, it doesn't work at all. So it's pretty fascinating what you can learn from simply like um, going through the pages of your favorite comic and picking up little things for your art here and there to try and emulate. And through the use of this exercise I found Dave Gibbons really helped me fix the perspective as well as ground the subjects. I know in the previous comic I kind of, I, I like doing this thing where um, the lines aren't as closed and it's a bit uh, more open, opened out and I don't think that really worked for the captions. They were kind of just bloody on top and they were trying to compete with the artwork itself. So I'm glad, I'm glad I was able to fix that in a way by pacing it out by using a nine panel grid so that there's better contrast with each snapshot in time. So yeah, I hope that helps you guys out with making your own comics. Even if you haven't got a story in mind or you're working towards that, it's good to like take a breather and like just record a moment of your life. Even if it's like a daydream or something. As long as you make it fun for yourself and with the help of your favorite artists, this will help you become better at crafting page layouts and how to tell an engaging and fun little story. So there you have it. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought of the intro as well as the whole video in the comments below. And once again, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers and have a good day.